Well, hey, AirZoo fans from Southwest Michigan and around the globe. I'm Troy Thrash, President and CEO, and it is my honor to welcome you to the 2020 Science Innovation Hall of Fame Awards. We are ready to honor some remarkable people tonight. So enjoy your drone's eye tour of the air zoo, and I can't wait to see you inside. What a privilege it is to be coming to you through the ether for the 7th Annual AirZoo Science Innovation Hall of Fame Awards. You, your corporations, schools, foundations, and community organizations motivate us more than you know. Because what drives us every single day is ensuring that the impacts that we have on our community, especially in the realm of inspiration and education of our young people, live up to and in fact exceed all of the support that you and our entire region provides to the Air Zoo. Inspiration, education, creativity, innovation is what we are here to celebrate tonight. So as we kick off tonight's event, there are a few people and groups so very important that I want to recognize. Our presenting sponsor, once again, is Western Michigan University. Western's remarkable staff, faculty, and administration have been awesome partners for the Air Zoo in so many ways, including providing exhibits like the Sunseeker solar car that we have in the Air Zoo's East Wing, and partnering with their best-in-country aviation program to allow students who are going through the Air Zoo's EFE Aviation Technology Program to earn credits in 11th and 12th grade toward a degree in Western School of Aviation. And this partnership is getting stronger every year. I wanna thank our amazingly awesome award sponsors, Pete and Barbara Parrish, the Tyler Little Family Foundation, and Donna Ward in honor of her late husband and 2019 Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame inductee, Dick Ward. Thank you to our perfectly passionate partner level sponsors, Bowers Aluminum, Eric Dougal, the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport, Shupan, 
and Zoetis. In addition, we have so many other supporting sponsors. I invite you to check out our digital download of our program. Go right now to airzoo.org slash Seihoff to download our program, see all of our sponsors, and also read all of the bios of our awardees and our inductees this evening. Tonight's festivities also normally include, as many of you know, a silent auction filled with lots of really unique items that help to fund this evening and also our education programs all around the community. In the interest of time, we won't be able to do that tonight, but I invite you to join us in November for an online silent auction. And if you are so moved tonight, visit airzoo.org support to provide a tax-deductible donation to help support all of the work that we do here at the Airzoo. So this evening, we will honor a group of remarkable aviation pioneers whose bravery and fortitude have helped protect and indeed change our world. Teachers who bring science to life every day for their classrooms. And young students, young men and women who have brought passion to their blossoming lives of science. Collectively, they represent all that we could ever hope for in inspiration, education, creativity, curiosity, and exploration. So after tonight, though, the heirs who must get back to work, we need to give even more students that aha moment that just might be the start or the spark toward local careers in science, technology, engineering, art, and math fields, and provide our educators even more resources to continue their own remarkable work both in and out of the classroom. We must do this because it is so important that we build a scientifically literate community in Southwest Michigan to ensure that our region can compete and thrive in the 21st century global economy. The students you will meet tonight all have had that one experience, that one teacher, that one mentor to show them that they can do math and science with their hands and their minds and their hearts and great careers await them if they just put in a little bit of hard work. We must continue the work of crushing educational inequality to ensure these opportunities for all students everywhere throughout the region. The educators you meet tonight have been inspired to take an active role in preparing their students and giving them the tools to succeed, showing them that math and science is fun and cool and it's not scary and it is a ticket to a better life right now. We must continue that work to provide that inspiration and those tools for our educators to succeed in growing the next generation of scientists and engineers and leaders and maybe even aviation and space heroes like those that you are going to meet tonight. And we can't wait, ladies and gentlemen. The time is now, right now. So let's get started by recognizing our newest class of enshrinees into the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame. I am pleased to fly you over to the Air Zoo's Flight Discovery Center to meet the chairman of the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame, Mr. Tim Keenan. Enjoy your flight.
Thank you, Troy. This is the 17th year that the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame has been aligned with the Air Zoo, and it's been a great partnership. The Hall of Fame started 32 years ago with a threefold mission. One, educate the public about the history of aviation and the contributions of Michigan citizens to aviation. Inspire youth to pursue careers in aviation and honor those Michiganders whose outstanding achievements have advanced aviation and aerospace worldwide. More than three decades later, along with the Air Zoo, the Hall of Fame is going strong and realizing that mission. Today, I stand in the Air Zoo's Restoration Center in the Flight Discovery Center, where a Navy FM-2 Wildcat is being restored after being submerged in Lake Michigan since 1944. This work is symbolic of the Hall of Fame. We honor people so the future generations can remember Michigan's aviation heroes. Planes like this one are being restored so that future generations can see history with their own eyes. This evening, we celebrate the careers of five aviation pioneers who joined aviation immortals such as Bill Boeing, Eddie Rickenbacker, astronauts Roger Chaffee, Al Warden, Jack Lausma, and Jim McDivitt, Henry and Edsel Ford, Tuskegee Airmen Alex Jefferson, Charles Lindbergh, and the Air Zoo's own Pete and Sue Parrish. All recipients have had their portraits sketched by artist Haley Ellis, daughter of Hall of Fame inductee and former Air Zoo president and CEO Bob Ellis. Haley is a very talented young artist and currently is working in graphic arts in the Detroit area. Tonight, these portraits are located on the kiosk outside of the Air Zoo's education labs and soon will be hung in the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame located in the museum's east wing. Recipients also received a medal with their name and class of 2020 inscribed on the back. As always, we invite them to wear it proudly at other public events, as well as at future Hall of Fame ceremonies here at the Air Zoo. Tonight's Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame enshrinement is sponsored by Pete and Barbara Parrish. Pete is both a founder of the Air Zoo and a member of the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame class of 2012. Our first 2020 enshrinee into the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame tonight is a World War II veteran from Dearborn and a former personal pilot to Walt Disney, Kelvin Bailey. Lieutenant Colonel Kelvin W.A. Bailey. Lieutenant Colonel Kelvin Bailey was born on December 29, 1920 in Corona, Saskatchewan, Canada. His family soon moved to Dearborn, Michigan, where Bailey would graduate from Dearborn High School in 1941. During high school, Bailey, on a very limited budget, purchased 10 to 20 minute flying lessons. He made his first solo flight in 1939, flying a two-cylinder, 42 horsepower airplane. Immediately following the attack on Pearl Harbor, Kelvin Bailey joined the United States Marine Corps, hoping to be a Marine aviator. He completed boot camp and was assigned to the Marine Corps Recruit Depot Property Office because he was an accomplished typist. Bailey then passed an all-day college-level written test, applied for flight training, and was accepted into the Navy's V-5 flight training program. He was discharged from the United States Marine Corps, immediately sworn in as a Navy aviation cadet, and sent to St. Mary's College for a required three-month Navy pre-flight school. Bailey received his Naval Aviator Wings and was commissioned a Marine Corps second lieutenant in October 1943. He was trained as a dive bomber pilot, flying the Douglas SBD Dauntless, then ordered to the South Pacific. Bailey's first combat was flying strikes against several Japanese-held islands, including the heavily defended Japanese naval base at Rabaul. His squadron then moved to the Philippine Islands, supporting the exposed flanks of the U.S. Army 41st Sunset Division attacking toward Manila. For that action, Bailey was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation. During World War II, Bailey flew 116 combat missions. He wore three Asiatic Pacific Battle Stars and was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and several Air Medals. After World War II, Bailey flew for the Marine Corps Reserve and as a pilot for Air California Airlines. During the Korean War, he was ordered to active duty and deployed to Korea where he flew in support of Marine operations, earning two battle stars on his Korean service ribbon. After the Korean War, Bailey was selected as the staff pilot for Medal of Honor recipient Major General Christian Schilt, who commanded all Marine aviation in the Pacific. General Schilt retired in 1957, and Bailey was again released from active duty, remaining in the Marine Air Reserve. 
He flew as an agency pilot at Washington National Airport, where he transported presidential candidates Goldwater, Kennedy, Nixon, Humphrey, and Johnson. He also participated as a pilot on highly classified missions from bases in foreign nations. While in Washington, D.C., Bailey was asked if he would consider moving to California to fly as Walt Disney's pilot in a newly purchased Gulfstream. Bailey accepted the invitation and was interviewed personally by Walt Disney at the New York World's Fair. Walt Disney stated that he wanted only the best pilot, and a few days later, Bailey was informed that he should relocate to Burbank, California, where the new Gulfstream was waiting for a crew. Bailey was designated chief pilot for Walt Disney Productions and for the next 13 years flew characters and movie stars to movie openings and flew Walt Disney and his executives on secret flights to Florida to scout and acquire land that would become the site of Walt Disney World. After flying over 32,000 accident-free hours in 33 different types of aircraft, Bailey's flying career ended suddenly when he was injured in a car accident. Kelvin Bailey passed away at the age of 84 in his Burbank, California home on April 19, 2004. For his long and distinguished flying service to his nation, and for his enduring legacy as one of our nation's most distinguished civilian pilots, Lieutenant Colonel Kelvin W.A. Bailey is inducted into the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame. Our next enshrinee is renowned professor of aerospace engineering at the University of Michigan, Harm Buny. Professor Harm Buning retired. Professor Harm Buning was born in The Hague, Netherlands on July 31, 1922. He grew up in Holland and came to the United States in 1945, sponsored by his uncle, renowned physicist and teacher George Uhlenbeck. Arriving in Ann Arbor in December of 1945, Harm received his Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degrees in Aerospace Engineering from the University of Michigan in 1949 and 1951. After a three-year teaching position at Oregon State, he returned to his alma mater as an assistant professor, rose to professor in 1963, and stayed at the University of Michigan throughout his career and after his retirement. In 1988, Harm achieved the distinction of being named the Arthur F. Thurnau Professor of Aerospace Engineering. Harm's early interest was in aerodynamics and aircraft performance, but as the space race began, he realized the importance of astrodynamics and became an expert in mission analysis and spacecraft design. Throughout his time at the University of Michigan, he taught courses in aerospace engineering, airplane performance, atmospheric flight dynamics, orbital mechanics, and space systems design for undergraduate and graduate studies. It is estimated that Professor Buning taught nearly all the University of Michigan aerospace engineering's 2,600 graduates during his 40 years of teaching. Many of his students would obtain notable positions in aviation and spaceflight, including Gemini 4 astronauts Jim McDivitt and Ed White, Apollo 15 astronauts Dave Scott, Jim Irwin, and Al Warden, and Skylab 2 astronaut Jack Lausma. Shortly after he was selected as an astronaut in 1963, Ed White invited Harm to the NASA Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, Texas, now the NASA Johnson Space Center, to teach orbital mechanics to the first two groups of astronauts. Professor Buning would make many trips to Houston to teach astronauts in the early critical days of American spaceflight, where his teaching would be influential in developing the crew's expertise in orbital rendezvous and docking, skills that would prove crucial for success of the manned lunar landings and space station programs. Professor Buning's students at Houston included those he taught at the University of Michigan, as well as Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Wally Shearer, Frank Borman, Tom Stafford, and other notable individuals who have cemented themselves in the history of spaceflight. In order to stay current with industry developments, Harm would spend his summers and sabbaticals working for Boeing, TRW, and Lockheed, where he would often find himself working alongside former students. In addition to teaching, he also ran the undergraduate co-op program, which placed many University of Michigan students in internships at Johnson Space Center and the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Harm was also involved in the ABET Engineering Accreditation Program and was awarded the Thurnau Award for Teaching Excellence. Upon his retirement in 1992, Harm kept an office at the university and maintained an active presence. Professor Buning passed away on May 12, 2006. He has a graduate teaching award and scholarship fund named in his honor.
for his dedication and contributions to education, aerospace, and spaceflight, and for his legacy as a professor and mentor to many of our nation's spaceflight pioneers, Harm Buning is inducted into the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame. Our third Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame enshrinee tonight is former Navy pilot, author, and Willow Run historian from Detroit, Ralph Houghton. Ralph Randy Houghton. Ralph Randy Houghton was born on September 8, 1943 in Detroit, Michigan. The son of a tool and die maker at Ford Motor Company's Willow Run Bomber Plant, Randy recalls many trips to the Willow Run Airport as a child. During those trips, Randy's father would point to the enormous factory on Ecorse Road and say, that's where I helped build the B-24 Liberator Bombers. Those early days began Randy's lifelong relationship with Willow Run and aviation. Randy's family lived near the Light Guard Armory on Eight Mile Road, where a young Randy watched World War II Army aircraft fly directly over his house. In 1953, Randy experienced his first commercial flight in an Eastern Airlines Connie from Willow Run to Florida. During the flight, Randy was invited to the cockpit where the captain and flight engineer briefed the eager nine-year-old on the aircraft's instruments. When Randy's family moved to Troy Township, Randy often rode his bike to nearby Burr's Airport to watch planes take off and land. His father's company owned a Lockheed 12A, which Randy would often fly the right seat in next to the company pilot, Bill Haddock. Bill taught Randy how to communicate with air traffic controllers on the aircraft radios. After graduating from Troy High School in 1961, Randy studied secondary education at Michigan State University. Randy also has a master's degree in business administration and management from Central Michigan University. In 1965, Randy pursued his dream of being pilot by responding to a U.S. Navy pilot recruiting advertisement. Randy passed the preliminary tests with flying colors and began taking flight lessons from Bill Haddock, accomplishing his first solo flight on May 8, 1965. After graduating from Michigan State University, Randy passed his aviation candidate flight physical and reported to the Naval Air Station in Pensacola, Florida on June 29, 1966 to begin Aviation Officer Candidate School. Randy graduated with top honors as best in his pilot training class in 1968. Volunteering to fly the P-3 Orion, his unit served in Southeast Asia where he was awarded the Air Medal for Extraordinary Achievement in Direct Support of Combat Operations in North and South Vietnam. Randy progressed to patrol plane commander and flew patrols in Sicily, the Azores, Bermuda, and Iceland. During this time, he was also selected as a P-3 instructor pilot. Randy reported to the Naval Recruiting District, Detroit, in 1977. After three years as a Navy recruiter, Randy received orders to the USS Enterprise, where he flew the carrier onboard delivery and served as officer of the deck. Randy elected to leave active Navy and joined the Navy Reserve, where he was assigned to Selfridge Air National Guard Base as a P-3 instructor pilot. Promotions to both Lieutenant Commander and Commander led Randy to assume command of the P-3 unit. Follow-on assignments included the Armed Forces Staff College and a billet on the Commander Naval Forces Europe Reserve Staff in Michigan and London, England. Randy retired after 26 years of sustained superior active and reserve service and now serves as an airline management special for USA Jet Airlines at Willow Run Airport. Randy has served as interim executive director as well as treasurer of the Yankee Air Museum. In 2016, Randy published a history of Willow Run titled Willow Run Images of Aviation, which has sold over 10,000 copies. For his service to our nation and for his dedication and contributions to preserving Michigan's aviation history, Ralph Randy Houghton is inducted into the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame. Our next Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame inductee is a former flight director at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center. From Mount Clemens, James Smolka. Colonel James W. Smolka retired. Colonel James W. Smolka, born on July 31, 1950, in Mount Clemens, Michigan, received his Bachelor of Science degree from the United States Air Force Academy in 1972. 
He is a 1978 graduate of the Air Force Test Pilot School, served on active duty until 1983, and subsequently served in the United States Air Force Reserve until 1999. Among the aircraft he flew in the Air Force were the T-38, A-7D, OV-10A, A-37, A-10A, and F-15B. Smolka retired from the Air Force Reserve with the rank of Colonel in 1999 after 27 years of active and reserve service. Smolka received a Master of Science degree in Aeronautical and Astronautical Engineering in 1980 from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He also earned an Engineer of Aeronautics and Astronautics degree from Stanford University in 1994. In 2011, he received a Master's degree in Applied Mathematics from the University of Washington. As the Director of Flight Operations at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California, Smolka was responsible for the center's fleet of highly modified manned and unmanned aircraft that are flown on worldwide science, astronomy, and aeronautical flight research missions, as well as the flight and ground crews that fly and maintain them. Smolka previously served as the center's chief engineer, responsible for providing independent technical guidance and oversight to flight projects to ensure conformance with center and agency standards, policies, and processes, as well as chairing the Airworthiness and Flight Safety Review Board that determines and provides the appropriate level of independent technical review for each project prior to flight. As a research pilot at NASA Dryden, now Armstrong, he had flown a variety of research and support aircraft. Smolka was project pilot on the Advanced Control Technology for Integrated Vehicles and Intelligent Flight Control Systems research projects flown on NASA's now-retired NF-15B research aircraft and the Gulfstream NASA F-15 Quiet Spike Sonic Boom Reduction Project. He was co-project pilot on the F-16XL Supersonic Laminar Flow Control Aircraft and the F-18 High Alpha Angle of Attack Research Vehicle Aircraft. He also participated in the F-15 High Deck Flight and Engine Control System projects, the AFTI F-16 F-111 Mission Adaptive Wing, and F-104 Aeronautical Research Aircraft projects. Before joining NASA, Smolka was an F-16 experimental test pilot with General Dynamics Corporation for two years at Edwards, including work as a project pilot with the Air Force NASA Advanced Fighter Technology Integration F-16 Joint Test Force. A longtime member, he was inducted as a fellow at the Society of Experimental Test Pilots 2012 Symposium, having attained a position of distinction in the field of experimental flight testing. Smolka has authored several technical publications and has taught several courses in the aerospace field for California State University, California State Polytechnic University, and Chapman College. He has accumulated more than 9,000 hours of flight during his flying career. For his service to our nation and for his dedication and contributions to innovative aeronautical advances, James W. Smolka is inducted into the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame. Our final enshrinee of the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame Class of 2020 is a retired U.S. Army Colonel from Allen Park, Robert Stackey. Colonel Robert F. Stackey, U.S. Army, retired. Robert Bob Stackey was born in Camden, New Jersey on May 17, 1951. His family moved to Michigan in 1954, where he would graduate from Allen Park High School in 1969. Volunteering for the draft in 1970, Stackey was trained in helicopter repair and served one year in Vietnam as a UH-1H helicopter crew chief and door gunner, earning eight air medals. After his Vietnam service, Stackey left active duty and was assigned to the Army Reserve for the remainder of his six-year obligation. During that time, he used the GI Bill to complete civilian pilot training, commercial pilot, and flight and ground instructor. Stackey used his certifications to teach pilot ground school classes at Henry Ford Community College in Dearborn for five years and worked as a flight instructor at Grozeal and Detroit Metro airports. In 1980, Stackey joined the Michigan Army National Guard and graduated from Army Officer Candidate School at Fort Benning, Georgia. He was commissioned a second lieutenant of infantry and completed helicopter flight school at Fort Rucker, Alabama. Assigned as a scout helicopter pilot in air cavalry, flying single pilot OH-59 Kiowa helicopters, his leadership assignments go on to include scout platoon team and section leader, platoon leader, attack helicopter company commander, battalion intelligence officer, logistics officer, operations officer, executive officer, battalion commander, brigade operations officer, 
Division Level Operations Officer and Chief of Staff. In 1981, while serving in the Michigan Army National Guard, Stackey was hired by the Federal Aviation Administration as a Flight Data Specialist at Detroit Metro Airport. Stackey graduated from the FAA Air Traffic Control Academy in 1984 and achieved Air Traffic Controller Certification at Detroit Willow Run Tower. In 1987, he transferred to the FAA Flight Inspection Office in Battle Creek, where he worked as an airspace system inspection pilot, designing instrument approach procedures, flight inspections, and certifying the national airspace system. As an FAA inspector, Stackey flew the Beach Super King Air 300, Learjet Model 60, and various types of turbine engine aircraft. Stackey retired from the Army in 2008 as a full colonel with over 31 years of military service and from the FAA in 2010 with 30 years of government service. He achieved a Bachelor of Science degree in Professional Aeronautics from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, a Master of Arts degree in Civil War Studies from the American Military University, and a Master of Strategic Studies degree from the United States Army War College. Stackey has accumulated over 12,000 pilot hours and is a certified remote drone pilot. His awards include the United States Army Legion of Merit, Vietnam Service Medal, Meritorious Service Medal with two oak leaf clusters, Air Medal with seven oak leaf clusters, Republic of Vietnam Cross of Gallantry with Palm, Republic of Vietnam Campaign Ribbon, and the State of Michigan Distinguished Service Medal. For his dedication and service to our country and his contributions to federal flight inspection and air traffic control, Colonel Robert F. Stackey is inducted into the Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, please give an at-home round of applause to our 2020 Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame and Shrinies. It's now my pleasure to send you back to Troy at the Air Zoo's Flight Innovation Center. Please be sure to check out the plaques of more than 130 Michigan Aviation Hall of Fame inductees on your flight or in person someday at the Air Zoo. Thank you, Tim, and welcome to all to the Air Zoo's Space Wing. 
It is now time to honor the Erzu's 2020 Science Innovation Hall of Fame Student and Educator Excellence Award winners. Along with community leaders like so many individuals and organizations who made tonight a reality, our Student and Educator Award winners personify the qualities of some of history's most transformative figures. These qualities held throughout history from Socrates to Da Vinci, Albert Einstein to Steve Jobs, the Wright brothers to the Rutan brothers, include relentless curiosity, groundbreaking creativity, a passionate quest for innovation, and a reverence for science's artistry and fundamental existence throughout humanity's place here on Earth. All Science Innovation Hall of Fame Award winners receive this kiln-fired glass sculpture made specifically for this event by Matawan artist Gloria Bodner. Gloria brought to life the Erezu's desired concept of a flight in an upward trajectory toward and among the stars. This is a trajectory that our students and educators have taken on their own and inspire others to do the same toward their own greatness in science and technology. And talk about the marriage of art and science. The process used to create that sculpture was born out of a process used in the construction of the space shuttle's main engines. Science and art are intertwined all around us, and that is so cool. Now, along with their sculptures, each award winner also receives a cash scholarship that was underwritten by our Hall of Fame award sponsors. We hope that these gifts will be another small springboard toward awesome work that we know that our students and educators are going to continue to do in the future. So, let's get to it by honoring our Educator Excellence Award winners, which are given each year to K-12 through educators across Western Michigan who take an innovative approach to teaching STEM disciplines, foster deep and meaningful STEM learning, and generate exceptional student achievement. Our first Educator Excellence Award goes to Grace Borsma, a 10th through 12th grade STEM teacher at Godwin Heights High School in Wyoming. Grace's award is sponsored by Donna Ward. I think science education is really pulling out the little kid scientists in every um, one of my students because as kids we are really curious about things around us. So really enlightening that curiosity in my kids, are, it's what science education is to me. I would say um, as cheesy as this is, my students this year have really pushed me to become a better educator. Um, Previous to this year, I didn't, I didn't have a fun curriculum. I wasn't getting engagement, and this year it has been completely different with kids wanting to learn, kids coming to my class to ask questions, kids wanting to find the answers. Um, so their excitement has really pushed me to do better because I know they want better. They want to learn this, so that pushes me to be better as an educator. I think the biggest challenge we have faced in science planning and curriculum is not having good science curriculum. Um, so Michigan just cha changed over to NGSS probably about four years ago, but we haven't had any curriculum that um, is good for like the M-STEP testing. So how do we prepare students when we don't have curriculum to do that? Um, biology has gotten a storyline curriculum that's super awesome, and we've been waiting for chemistry to um, come up with their unit as well but we've just been waiting and waiting and waiting so this year I really um, took what I could find and really tried to make it my own because there's just it's so hard to find good curriculum right now I really think getting students 
um, engaged in the curriculum has been such an accomplishment for me. Students would ask questions and it would be like, oh, like here's the answer to that. And now it's, okay, well, that's a great question. Let's get it on the question board and let's see what we can find the answer to. Um, and it's really hard to shift that mindset of students of, I'm not gonna tell you the answer. You have to do the work to find that answer. So getting students to not only buy into that, but then trust in the teacher of, we will get there, just trust me on that, um, has been challenging, but has been really, really um, beneficial to their learning as well as my teaching as well. I really hope and in the future, students think back to me as a teacher that pushed them in their thinking um, and wasn't just like, well, here's the answer or do this, this is the right way to do it, but really allowed them to grow in what they thought was correct or what they thought was the right way to do something. Um, a lot of people, when I ask them, like, when they ask me, oh, what do you do? I say, oh, I'm a chemistry teacher. And they always say, oh, I hated chemistry. That's like the number one response. And it's just like, I'm really sorry you didn't have an engaging curriculum possibly or an engaging teacher because a lot of times teachers would just sit behind the desk, you'd read the material and fill out a worksheet and that's just not, that's not my classroom and I just, you know, I, I have good relationships with students but I, I just really hope that they think of me as, she pushed me. It was not, it wasn't easy but I wouldn't say it's impossible in this classroom to be successful because I want I want them to be the learners, not just, and the teachers, not just me giving them the answers at all times. On behalf of the Air Zoo Board of Trustees, staff, and volunteers, I congratulate Grace Borsma from Godwin Heights High School on her 2020 Educator Excellence Award. Our second Educator Excellence Award winner is Mark Maddox, a 9th through 12th grade STEAM teacher at Allegan Alternative High School. Mark's award is sponsored by Pete and Barbara Parrish. Science education is about kids understanding the world around them. I would say that uh, on a daily basis, I mean, the kids really push me the most. Um, you know, we, uh, uh, I think that uh, at any school, but certainly here as well, um, you know, our, uh, uh, the youth these days are demanding and, and they, uh, they expect a lot from their, uh, from their educators and, and from the, uh, um, the, the adults that are in their lives. And so um, I think that uh, uh, that, that pushes me to, to try to do more for them. I think that um, what's been the hardest for me, and, and particularly with uh, this um, uh, project-based learning uh, curriculum that we're really pursuing here at the um, Elegant Alternative High School, um, has been this sense of, of letting go of some control, um, trying to shift my role from being um, knowledge distributor to more of a uh, lead learner and, uh, and almost fellow learner type of role in, in the classroom and it's been, um, it's, it's really challenging. I, I certainly am a, a, a kind of that type A controlling personality and, and it's always been more comfortable for me to um, have a set plan and, and set goals and know specifically where we're going to go on what day and in what order and, um, and trying to, to let go of that and, and allow the, uh, the students to, to lead the way has been, um, has been a challenge for sure. I, I think that my biggest accomplishment really isn't an accomplishment yet. I think that I've really, I, I, I think I've really made strides this year towards um, incorporating more of this uh, project-based learning um, curriculum into the classroom. And, uh, and so it's sort of accomplishment an accomplishment, but I think that there's still quite a long ways to go. But I do, I do like um, how uh, as a school, we're able to kind of move in this new direction and, and, and really explore and, and, and test, um, you know, what's really best for the students and, and what they'll get the most benefit from. Our dreams are, are certainly not um, small. You know, we do, uh, 
We think that we're really um, pursuing a, a, a new type of science education here. Um, and, and we think that, you know, with some of the things that, that will be happening here over the next uh, year, and year and a half, I think that we'll, uh, what we're really trying to do is come up with a new way uh, to reach students and, and allow them to pursue goals while also meeting the standards that, um, uh, that really gives them the tools to succeed um, in a, uh, a science-related career or a science-related uh, college degree should they, uh, should they want to go that direction, but, but really to give them tools that will be applicable for them in, in any endeavor they pursue. On behalf of the Air Zoo Board of Trustees, staff, and volunteers, I congratulate Mark Maddox of Allegan Alternative High School on his 2020 Educator Excellence Award. Thank you very much. Our third Educator Excellence Award winner is Mary Phillips, a third through fifth grade teacher at North Shore Elementary in South Haven. Mary's award is sponsored by the Tyler Little Family Foundation. Science and education is about innovation and giving children, equipping them with the skills that they need to be able to solve today's problems and tomorrow's problems and building agency in them so that kids understand that they don't have to be 18 and gainfully employed as an adult to solve problems and to tackle things they're passionate about. My students, absolutely every single day. Um, I think the greatest joy that I get out of teaching is being able to be a learner. I enjoyed school and I enjoyed learning new things, um, whether it was outside on my own or looking up something on the internet to learn something new. In teaching, I get to learn something new and, and strive for more knowledge. I think one of the accomplishments I'm most proud of is actually from high school. Um, I applied for a flight scholarship through Civil Air Patrol, and I got an opportunity to learn how to fly a plane. Um, besides the fact that I'm female and I was, I didn't yet know how to drive a car, I was also born with a birth defect in my left eye and have no vision in my left eye. So when I got the scholarship, I had no idea if they'd actually let me fly. And the thing I'm proudest of is my willingness to jump into that with two feet and just go, you know what, this is a crazy adventure. I don't know how it's gonna end, but I'm gonna go for it and see what happens. Lots of good trouble. Yeah. I'm inspired by Representative John Lewis and he said, get into lots of good trouble. And, it, and one of the things I really enjoy doing is giving agency to young people. I don't ask them, what do you wanna be when you grow up? I don't ask them, what, do you, what problem do you wanna solve when you grow up? What problem do you want to solve? What are you passionate about? What makes you angry? And then show them lots of examples of students that are, and young people that are already doing that. You know, I think that it's important that kids understand that, especially with the power of technology today, that they can start addressing things that they're passionate about, that they're angry about now. And so that's, for me, a lot of good trouble. I've always loved science. I did Science Olympiad when I was in school and um, loved all of building gadgets and experimenting. We were campers and I always loved to hike and find animals and creatures. We always had all the field books. And I think what I didn't realize, and I wish somebody had told me, is that there's room in your life for art and science and STEM education and STEAM education shows that that creative thinking process is all under the same umbrella. And that's the greatest joy that I have is to pass it on and say, look, you can be artistic and musical and you can be a scientist too. That that logical thinking and that creative thinking are actually one and the same. That it's not this left brain versus right brain piece. On behalf of the Air Zoo Board of Trustees, staff, and volunteers. 
I congratulate Mary Phillips from North Shore Elementary on her 2020 Educator Excellence Award. Our fourth and final 2020 Educator Excellence Award goes to Thea Vaughn, a kindergarten teacher at Lake Center Elementary in Portage. Thea's award is sponsored by Cliff Mulder Retirement and Investment Planning of Raymond James and Dar and Mary Wellington. So science and early childhood education looks like an insatiable curiosity. Uh, it requires or includes, encompasses hands-on discoveries, hands-on exploration, questioning, problem solving, chitter chatter. <laughs> um, it's fun. Why I strive to achieve and, and want to accomplish more is um, truly my students. <laughs> and um, they, you know, I just love being a learner in my own classroom. I am not the teacher. <laughs> I am also a student. I get to guide and facilitate, but I learn so many different things from year to year, just from my little five-year-olds who are interacting in my room, asking questions, talking, learning, growing their passions, their interests. And if I can hear or see any little bit of that, well, how can we develop that? <laughs> how can we make that big for you? Because I want their dreams to come true. The biggest accomplishment to date is more on a daily basis and whether or not my students go home with a smile on their face, a joy for learning, and a desire to come back and do some more the next day. That's a big accomplishment and those are the ones I like to celebrate the most. In the future, I plan to achieve similar things that I just do every day of every school year. I love, beyond love probably, kindergarten. And so my future goals would be just to continue growing, continue being a learner myself. Um, and then also bringing that back to my classroom, bringing my learning back to my classroom and making, continue to make this exciting place where kids can learn and grow. Art opens up the, science, the world of science to kids in many ways. Um, I'd like to even encompass not just art, but the encore classes. Uh, whenever we give kids a platform um, to explore, to problem solve, to make a mental plan. When we do that, we invite kids to a platform of learning that taps into their passions, their desires, um, their interests. And it becomes a place of learning where I'm not just at a desk or I'm not just within this these four walls but I am I I am in the place that I love to be on behalf of the Air Zoo Board of Trustees staff and volunteers I congratulate Thea Vaughn of Lake Center Elementary on her 2020 Educator Excellence Award Ladies and gentlemen, please give a rousing at-home round of applause for all of our 2020 Educator Excellence Award winners. It is now my pleasure to introduce the 2020 Science Innovation Hall of Fame Student Excellence Award winners.
These awards are given to students annually in grades 9 through 12 who not only excel academically in the STEAM disciplines, but who have also sought independently to expand their knowledge and their skills throughout the sciences and inspire others to do the same. Our first Student Excellent Award winner is John Dirksy, a senior from Hudsonville High School. His award is sponsored by Shupan and Zoetis. I think that science and education means an opportunity to advance the future and advance where we're going. I think it gives us an opportunity to do better than we currently are, and that's what I like about it. I think my parents do a lot. Um, ever since I was a little kid, my dad would tell me that I could do anything that I wanted to do and anything I put my mind to. And I think that I've been able to successfully do that. I mean, with robotics, um, you, you're always learning, you're always improving. And same goes with any other sport, like I do swimming and water polo too. So just learning the game, and you can, you can do it. <laughs> Murphy's Law comes to mind. Every, every robotics tournament you go to, something's going to go wrong. And it's, it's overcoming that adversity and being able to adjust on the fly and problem solve that helps you prevail. The biggest accomplishment to date has got to be my senior year in general. I've been doing pretty well with everything that I've been doing. Our water polo team won the state championship. I've been a starter on there for since my sophomore year. And we won the state championship for robotics this year, which was really cool. I want to go into a field, I'm thinking about computer science currently, but I want to go into a field where I can improve the state of affairs, like if it would be um, renewable energy some way to uh, advance energy storage in a way that would benefit people or if it was computer science they're coming up with new programs and new new developments every day that are going to be used in people's lives in a meaningful way so I'd like to do that. I have been swimming and playing water polo for my entire life basically ever since elementary school and so this year it's all coming to a head and we won the state championship for water polo which was very good <laughs> after a disheartening loss last year um, so it, overcoming adversity again it's a big part of it and for swimming this year i'm going after a state title in that too 100 breaststroke individual event so we'll see how that goes um, and robotics as well, we, we were able to make advancements this year from last year and improve, and this time come away with a state championship. So it's all about putting in the hard work and dedication and um, keeping at whatever you want to accomplish because you can make it happen. On behalf of the Air Zoo Board of Trustees, staff, and volunteers, I congratulate John Dirksy from Hudsonville High School on his 2020 Student Excellence Award. Our second Student Excellence Award winner is Megan Heerlin, a senior at Vicksburg High School. Megan's award is sponsored by Eaton Cummins Automated Transmission Technologies and Esper Electric. There is no way we have discovered every endless possibility of the universe. And I think like that because, you know, we're always discovering things, we're always improving things, and we're always innovating things. And no matter what, there's always things manifesting and there's, you know, there's just everything changes.
people that influence me in my life are my my parents, my family, um, and the coworkers and the residents uh, where I work. The biggest challenge in my life that I'm actually still dealing with uh, is my my anxiety. My biggest accomplishment to date would probably be winning the uh, Western Michigan University's Innovation Expo 2018. Um, not because of the, the winning part, but mostly because you know you had to like pre present you like your um, innovation and stuff, and it like. Like it made me like prove to myself that I can talk to people and that I can I can present like my ideas. I literally have like a list of like 300 plus things like I want to achieve in my lifetime. Um, some crazy things, some like simple, small like normal life things. The biggest thing I want to achieve in life is to make a positive impact in the world. On behalf of the Air Zoo Board of Trustees, staff, and volunteers, I congratulate Megan Heerlin from Vicksburg High School on her 2020 Student Excellence Award. Our third Student Excellence Award winner is Hung Huin, a senior at Portage Northern High School and the Kalamazoo Area Math and Science Center. Hung's award is sponsored by the First National Bank of Michigan and Bowers Aluminum. To me, Science and education gives people the opportunity to explore ideas and things that they never knew about. And to sum it up in one sentence would be very hard because that, I believe, undermines the scope of what we're dealing with. But to put it in one sentence, science and education means innovation and the capacity for humans to make changes to the world and environment around them. Personally, I'm an intrinsically motivated person, so I set my eyes on a goal and then I go towards it with what I've got. My parents also encourage me to do what I do. And then along with that, I have teachers and mentors who also share the same passions that I share, and it's great to be around them because they encourage me to strive for more. And One of the things that I've always loved doing was playing basketball. Sophomore year, I tore my ACL, so that really kind of broke my heart because I love playing basketball, and then that took a while to sink in and then force me to reconsider what I want to do with the rest of my high school career. That summer with rehab and a lot of thought considering, okay, maybe it's time to let this go and pursue something else, pursue something else that you also care about just as much and pursue something that is gonna be what you're gonna work with in your future. And that was more rigorously pursuing STEM. And so in exiting basketball, it was kind of like finding that courage that sometimes it takes courage to hold on to hope for four months limping and hoping that you're okay, but sometimes it takes courage to let go of all that work that you've put into something and start on a new path, start a new, start on a new journey. On behalf of the Air Zoo Board of Trustees, staff, and volunteers, I congratulate Hong Huin of Portage Northern High School and the Kalamazoo Area Math and Science Center on his 2020 
Student Excellence Award. Our fourth Student Excellence Award winner is Rainia Liu, a senior at Portage Central High School and the Kalamazoo Area Math and Science Center. Rainia's award is sponsored by Eric Dougal from Hub International and the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport. To me, science and education are the two things that have gotten me to where I am now, and they are the two things that will continue to drive me into the future. I don't think it's just one person that influences me or pushes me to do more. It's a group of people. I'm, to be honest, not that talented and I'm really only here today because I've been fortunate enough to meet a lot of great people in my life from music teachers, just school teachers, and especially my parents. My greatest struggle is with myself and especially my self-confidence. Um, it just fluctuates a lot. At times I can be very confident in myself and sometimes overconfident and I overestimate my abilities and then other times I completely um, underestimate what I can do and really just have this I can't do it mindset. I just have faith that if I keep going on in my life and trying my best, it, I will eventually find this kind of balance. I'm not the same person that I was a year ago or the year before. Um, it's the fact that I've kind of changed and evolved over the years. Um, even if it's just minuscule changes, I'm, at least it shows that I'm learning from my experiences. My future plans right now are a little up in the air, um, but what I do know is that I want to impact people in a positive way. I know that's a very cliche answer, but um, I was maybe hoping to go into the medical field or into public health because in this COVID-19 crisis, um, these people are playing a very important role in society right now. On behalf of the Arizu Board of Trustees, staff, and volunteers, I congratulate Rainia Liu of Portage Central High School and the Kalamazoo Area Math and Science Center on her 2020 Student Excellence Award. We are back in the Air Zoo's main exhibit hall to present our final award for the evening, the Student Art and Science Award. This award is given to a high school student who exemplifies the special harmony between art and science. This year's Student Art and Science Award goes to Shelby Alexander, a junior at Comstock High School and the Kalamazoo Area Math and Science Center. Shelby's award is sponsored by the Tyler Little Family Foundation. Science and education mean to me discovering new ideas through making mistakes. So who influences me? Well, Isaac Newton said we stand on the shoulders of giants. So for me, that's probably Hal Prince and Stephen Sondheim.
So this past summer, I took two classes at Harvard Secondary Summer Program. One was a website design class, and for that, I made a full-blown website, combining my love for screenwriting uh, with my love for engineering websites. And then the other class I took was called Intermediate Screenwriting, where I wrote 30 pages of my feature-length film called OO, and it's an idea I've had since sixth grade, inspired by a documentary I watched about extinct animals. And one of those animals is called the Kauai O'o birds. They've gone extinct three times and come back twice. And so my feature film is a what if they came back a third time, uh, combining family values and criticism on tourism, um, all about these little birds that have so much hope left. So that's what I did this summer, and that's one of my biggest accomplishments. So. So in the future, I really hope to meld art and science even more by um, innovating theater in a way, combining interactivity and technology into the plays and the musicals that we see on Broadway. So I've married art and science by doing fun research projects, doing fun creative projects. So uh, something I did this past junior year was in my physics class, we had to do a research project, and I asked for an art one, and I was given a project about anamorphic art and how anamorphism kind of works within the world of history and today, and I determined that there are equations to determine anamorphism, and I showed it using a grid system. So that's kind of how you marry art and science, is just by finding your own ways of doing it and what you're interested in. On behalf of the Airzu Board of Trustees, staff, and volunteers, I congratulate Shelby Alexander of Comstock High School and the Kalamazoo Area Math and Science Center on her 2020 Student Art and Science Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a hearty at home round of applause to all of our 2020 Science Innovation Hall of Fame Student Excellence Award winners. Oh, and while we're at it, let's give a round of applause to all of our award winners and inductees this evening. The Science Innovation Hall of Fame event is typically the Air Zoo's biggest fundraiser every year. But it's also a celebration. A celebration of those aviation and space heroes and their incredible accomplishments from all across Michigan. A celebration of our students and our teachers and all of the great things that they have been doing now and even greater things we know that they're going to do in the future. So if you liked what you've seen tonight, please feel free to go to airzoo.org support and provide a tax deductible donation of any amount to continue support to support the Air Zoo's work. So in closing, I wanna thank you and so many other people and companies and community organizations from across this remarkable region that we call Southwest Michigan. I thank all of you for your unwavering support of the Air Zoo. It is because of you that in 2019, the Air Zoo's 40th anniversary, we were able to break all kinds of participation records seeing last year almost 204,000 people here at the Air Zoo and participating in programs across our communities. It is because of you that we saw more students here on field trips and out in the community in our education programs in their schools and community organizations than we ever have before. And we know that our educational impact on those students has been more broad, and more deep than ever. It is because of you that we have been able to open up five new exhibits over the last six months, including Alien Worlds and Androids, all about how we robotically explore our solar system, and we find planets orbiting around nearby stars. Another exhibit is all about the remarkable life of Amelia Earhart. It is because of you that our restoration team is considered the primo restoration center 
for Navy World War II aircraft, and we're only getting better. It is because of you that the Airzoo can create programs like the Corporate Engineering Challenge, where we connect female scientists and engineers from companies like Stryker and Pfizer and Zoetis and Eaton and so many others, working with young girls ages 9 to 12 to inspire them to fall in love with math and science with their minds and their hands and their hearts, and to show them that there are amazing careers for them right here in Southwest Michigan. It is because of you that in less than two months, the Air Zoo is going to become the first non-government museum to receive, restore, and put on display in public view an F-117 stealth fighter. And it is because of you that our impact across the community right now pales in comparison to all of our future work that we are now poised to make happen. It is because all of you make the air zoo soar every day. I thank you for that. Good night.